Good evening. Welcome to Oconee County Board of Commissioners meeting. Today is Tuesday, November the 2nd. If you're joining us virtually to comment during the public comment portions of the meeting, please use the raise hand feature in Zoom. After a moment of silence, we're going to ask Holly to lead us, lead us in the pledge. Please stand. Our first item of business will be to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. I second. Very good. A motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Next item is statement and remarks from citizens. This is anything for anything not on the agenda for tonight. Anyone virtually? Thank you. Any statements or remarks from commissioners? Got one, sir. Yes, go ahead. Um, last week I joined the meeting virtually and I was not here, but I wanted to say um, an appreciation to Adam and his staff and, and the whole group at the uh, Water Resources Department for all the work that they put into uh, updating those wastewater standards. It, that was a long, lengthy process. I did read them and review them, and, and uh, so I appreciate all the work that they did on that. Very good. Thank you. A couple of announcements. Oconee Veterans Memorial Foundation will host a Veteran Days program. That'll be on November the 11th at Veterans Park. And that program will begin at 11 a.m. Also, Parks and Recreation Department in Keep County Beautiful are partnering with the Athens Land Trust to host an invasive species plant removal work days. And those are start at 9 a.m. and go to 1 p.m. That'll be on November 9th, November 23rd, and November 27th. Also, we still have some citizen uh, board application peers that are still open. Uh, Oconee County Farmland Preservation Committee has two appointments. Library Advisory Board has two appointments. Board of Elections has two appointments. And Oconee River Resource Conservation Development Council Board has one appointment. Uh, you can go to the website for applications and the deadline is Tuesday, November 9th at noon. With that, we'll move on to approval of the minutes. We have minutes from October 5th and also October 26 for approval. I make a motion to approve the 5th and 26th of October as submitted. Second. We have a motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Our next item is the recognition of Don Phillips and I'm I. And we're going to ask uh, County Fire Marshal to come up and kind of tell us about what's going on with that. And then we have a resolution that uh, Commissioner Saxon will read for us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioners. So last year we did a uh, addition to fire station number five, uh, East Oconee Fire Station. And along with that, we did a new water tank. Um, we contracted with IMI for the support structure for the tank. And uh, when we got down to the end, time to, to pay, uh, Mr. Phillips said, don't worry about it, it's on me. Uh, so it was, it was, we were very grateful for everything that he did, uh, him and his staff just, they, they really went out of the way. Um, even created a, uh, a mechanism for turning the, the water on. So they really did a great job. We'd really like to say thank you. Very good. Thank you. With that, we'll go ahead and let uh, Mark read the proclamation. Here. Whereas the Oconee County Fire Rescue Department is an integral and vital part of the Oconee County community. And whereas Oconee County residents, volunteers, and businesses generously support public safety efforts throughout the county. And whereas the Oconee County Board of Commissioners recently completed the expansion of the East Oconee Fire Station in order to ensure superior facilities for fire protection. And whereas a new $10,000 water supply tank for the East Oconee Fire Station was deemed critically important to effective firefighting operations as a, as a mechanism to provide an adequate water supply for fire trucks. And whereas IMI, Industrial Services Group, under the, director, under the direction of Don Phillips, graciously donated all materials and labor to provide a new 10,000 gallon water tank for the East Oconee Fire Station at no cost to the county taxpayers. Now, therefore, be it resolved 
that the Oconee County Board of Commissioners acknowledges and thanks Don Phillips and the entire staff of IMI Industrial Services Group for their generosity and supporting Oconee County Fire Rescue in its mission to protect the lives and property of Oconee County residents. Signed, Chairman John Dagnan. Thank you. And we'll let uh, Russ take that over and deliver that to them. Our next item is a uh, tax commissioner efficiency study agreement. Uh, Commissioner Riddle cannot be here tonight. Uh, we have an agreement. She's requested a uh, efficiency study for her office and the study will be conducted by change partners. Uh, as part of the process will include a vendor meeting with the tax commissioner review scope process and final reporting. There'll be vendor meetings with the tax commissioner staff. Tax commissioner is to collect and report data to the vendor in a timely fashion. Additional items may be requested by the vendor as well. Uh, Board of Commissioners agreed to provide funding for the study. Um, once the study is completed, uh, change partners will produce a final report to both parties and the final report will be used to negotiate the next step in the process. Uh, Commissioner Riddle's read this, she's already signed it on her end, so we just need a, a motion and a vote to approve it on our end. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, did you say when the start of that study would take place? That will start sometime the first quarter of next year. Okay. Yeah. It'll kind of depend on her workload and theirs as well. Well, I'd certainly uh, be happy to make the motion, Mr. Chairman, to approve the uh, efficiency study agreement for the tax commissioner's office. Second. You have a motion second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, motion carries. Now we'll move into the hearing and zoning actions. Uh, first item is rezone number P21-0156, Sapphire Properties LP. This is AG to AR and it's 4.42 acres located at 5031 Monroe Highway. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Again, this is uh, P21-0156 located uh, just off of uh, Highway 78 Monroe Highway. Um, this is the overall location map. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is the subject parcel and area. Uh, this uh, current zoning is AG with uh, suburban neighborhood as a character area. And uh, again, the request is from AG to AR uh, in order to subdivide into two single family residential lots. Uh, this is the concept plan that you have in your uh, packets. enlargement of that uh, representative architectural images <clears throat> and the uh, staff recommends approval conditional approval subject to the following conditions are uh, one standard condition and planning commission recommends approval of those same conditions now we'll hear from the owner of the agent of the owner Uh, I'm Brett Thurman. I live at 160 West Thompson Street, Bogart, Georgia, and I represent Rob Scott, Sapphire Properties, who owns a parcel uh, here in question. Uh, it, this is a single family residential lot already, zoned AG. We like to subdivide it into two so that he could place another house uh, on, a, you know, on its own lot. He would share an existing uh, undeveloped driveway that's there right now that's aligned with the curb cut, or excuse me, the median cut that's there in uh, Highway 78. So we're not creating any kind of unsafe condition, nor do we have to really go back. We don't. We won't have to go back to GDOT to deal with an additional driveway. Um, it's a. Uh, we're going to. The houses will be constructed, you know, according to Oconee County standards, and uh, we believe it'll be a good improvement on the property. The house itself is a little run down, and uh, Rob's going to put some money into that to bring it back up to a much better property, and then build another one right next to it. So we think it'll be a great improvement, and we hope you. Uh, would agree with us and vote to rezone this. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Scott, did you want to speak tonight? Real brief. Rob Scott, I live at 1457 Ruth Jackson Road, Bogart, Georgia. And I just wanted to, uh, you saw the type of houses we're going to build, which is uh, for that area, probably better than most of the houses in that area. So we're just trying to build a, a modest but nice house in that area. Thank you. 
Does anyone else wish to speak for the rezone? Anyone virtually? Does anyone wish to speak against the rezone? Anyone virtually? With that, we'll go ahead and close public comments and open up to questions from commissioners. With that, we'll entertain a motion. I make a motion we approve rezone P21-0156 FR properties LP AG to AR plus or minus 4.4 acres. 5031 Monroe Highway Residential with the one condition. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second to approve rezone P21-0156 with one condition. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Our next item is rezone for Ms. Rosemary Franklin. This is uh, 15 acres it's located at 2601 Snows Mill Road. This will encompass rezone P21-0167. Variance P1, P21-0168, and variance P21-0169. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Again, this is the location map for Rezone P21-0167 and the two associated variances. This is the aerial photograph of the tax parcel and of Snow's Mill on the upper left. Uh, it's currently zoned AG in the uh, rural places character area. And again, the request is uh, to go from AG to AR uh, in order to subdivide into three single family residential lots. And then the variance request uh, is accompanying the, the special exception variance is P210169 to allow vehicular access to an existing street outside of the subdivision and then hardship variance P210168 uh, to reduce the required width of the private access easement. Uh, this is the concept plan that's in your packets. Uh, notice the two smaller lots up front uh, with the 10 acre remaining at the back and the private access drive with the cul-de-sac uh, that is proposed to be constructed. These are the architectural representative images. And staff recommends conditional approval uh, with the two conditions. I want our standard condition and two, no further subdividing or subject permitted on the property. Planning Commission recommends approval subject to conditions recommended by staff. And then as far as the uh, variances go, uh, uh, the hardship variance P21-0168, uh, staff does uh, believe this request meets all necessary conditions to grant the special exception uh, with the one condition. The special exception hardship, uh, the special exception variance P21 0169. Again, staff believes this does meet all necessary conditions to grant the special exception variance with the one condition. Thank you. Frank Pittman. Good evening. Uh, <clears throat> My name is Frank Pittman. I live at 1400 Saxon Road, Watkinsville. Um, I'm here representing uh, Darren Britt, who is, is not the current owner, but has the property un under contract to purchase. Um, I want to give you guys a little bit of background information on the property. So it, it's 15 acres, zone AG today. That allows, that allows them to subdivide this into three lots today um, without, without a rezone, without any of these variances. The, the reason for this request is because there's a lot of floodplain on the property. There's some bad topography in areas. So we're just trying to adjust where those three lots go. And to do that, we've got two of those lots have to be under five acres. And so that requires you go to AR. Once you, once you rezone it, then that kicks these variances in because then it's a major subdivision, which, which doesn't allow, they're supposed to come off the road and that kind of stuff. So, um, we're not asked for anything he's not allowed to do today. We're just really trying to shift lots around um, to use the, the, the better land um, and looking at this. So, so there's no increase in loud density over today. Um, we, we just, we just want to use better, better, better property. Um, there is an existing house on it, which would remain on one of the lots that kind of dictated a little bit to where the, where the lot lines would have to go. Um, and looking around there, you know, they're, even though this is kind of the rural area, it's right on the county line on the river, um, there, there are 22 other lots that are less than three acres with, within two thirds of a mile of this. 
So it's not, we're not asking for something that, that is uncommon in that area. Um, so with that, I would, I'm, I'll leave it open to, to any questions um, and uh, we'll ask for you guys approval on these items. Thank you. Thank you. When anyone else wish to speak for the rezone or the variance request? Anyone virtually? Does anyone wish to speak against the rezone or the variance request? Anyone virtually? Okay. With that, we'll go ahead and close the public comment portion and open up to any questions from commissioners. I've got a couple. Uh, if Jack can go back to the concept. Uh, question has to do with the uh, make sure I understand the how the county uh, handles uh, the floodplain the dotted line is the that's the 100 year floodplain yes sir the heavy one and that's yeah. that's determined by FEMA yes sir now what is our responsibility as a county as our inspection department to make sure nothing is built within that floodplain we would not permit any new structures in that floodplain. I understand that, but okay. how do we make sure that they don't build in that floodplain? Does our inspectors pull a tape? No, oh, no, a site plan is submitted with all of our building permits okay. that, that would show that floodplain and show that building outside of the floodplain. But, our, but as far as being on the ground, our inspectors would make sure that it's not built within the floodplain. Our inspectors would make sure that it's built per the plan that was approved with the building permit, okay. and that would be out of the floor plan. Okay. Now, the second question has to do with, uh, are these considered like state waters? Is there a state buffer or There stream? is. Mm -hmm. Remind me, is that 25 feet or 50? Those are shown on this site plan as well. Those are the dashed lines. And so the state tw is 25 foot. Now, who monitors that for the state? Do the state or do we? We do. We do? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's in addition to the floodplain. I mean, as far well, as- Well, it, it's contained within that. Know, uh, it, yes. What's the restrictions on that 25 foot buffer? Undisturbed. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Yes. Any other questions? With that, we'll open up uh, for a motion on the rezone 21-0167. We'll make a motion to approve P21-0167 with the two conditions. Second. We have a motion and second to approve rezone P21-0167 with two conditions. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, motion carries. And now we'll entertain a motion for variance P21-0168. I make a motion to approve variance P21-0168. Rosemary Franklin will reduce the width of private business easement plus or minus 15 acres with the one condition. Second. We have a motion and second to approve variance P21-0168 with one condition. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, motion carries. I guess I'll make the motion to approve variance P21-0169 for Rosemary Franklin to allow vehicular access to an existing street outside the subdivision, 2601 Snows Mill Road with conditions. Second. second. You had a motion and second to approve variance P21-0169 with one condition. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, motion carries. Now we're moving to countywide measures. Uh, first item is discuss and consider a potential broadband agreement. Justin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. As uh, we discussed last week, we are proposing entering into an agreement with Charter uh, to build out the unserved um, portions of the county. Just briefly to recap, um, this is primarily the south and the western portion of the county. There's two areas we're really talking about here, uh, an area defined by the Department of Community Affairs as unserved, and then there's the additional area that is um, defined as the RDOF area, which is the regional, re, regional digital, essentially area that uh, Charter has received federal funding to build out. And the reason the agreement with Charter makes a lot of sense for the county is they have the federal funding, and so they'll be deploying resources there. So they work, and I believe their term was a synergistic build. 
Um, and so what this, what we're talking about is in the unserved area, approximately 1377 unserved addresses as part of the agreement, it would, it would go um, field verify all of these um, and then additional almost 800 addresses. So we're talking about approximately 2200 currently, current addresses not receiving um, uh, broadband right now that would be built out as part of this. The RDOF area would be uh, previously scheduled for 2027. They've agreed to move that up to the front of the line or the others. What this does is allows us to get ahead of a lot of the state um, funding for all the various broadband projects. And we're looking at approximately a two year completion of this. Um, the way this is structured right now is between 1.3 million and $1.7 million. And the reason there's some variability is we've added an accelerator clause bonus uh, if charter connects the address within calendar year 2022, there's an additional 200. Otherwise it's a $1,000 per, per connection. So the funding for this would, would come from the ARPA funds, American Rescue Plan funds, which are designated for COVID relief or either broadband or um, sewer connections. And so this lines up directly with some of the funding that we previously didn't have two years ago, we have now. Um, and so we can uh, redeploy this toward um, the broadband. Uh, this is a fiber build um, with available speeds up to one gig um, for, the, for these addresses. The way the funding would work is uh, follow, we would issue a initial 50%, um, approximately $688,000. Uh, once they hit their 1,000th address pass, we hit the second um, payment um, going forward. So the action before, and as part of it also um, in, in conjunction with Charter, uh, we'll be setting up a portal for those who uh, wish to um, receive it, even if they may not necessarily be within the um, address just to identify um, addresses requesting the broadband service going forward. The contract is also structured so it can be scaled up in the future so that if we wish to go outside the area uh, in conjunction with charter, we'd have some, some ability to do some amendments just going forward. Again, taking advantage of the partner. Charter has been very active in the previous two months, two months, two years uh, within the area, building out some areas of uh, Lake Creek comes to as an example where they're moving forward. And so there's someone who's local in the area, even though they're a very large company. Um, and then it, this makes sense from, a sense from a scale perspective. So the action before you, uh, we would request that you approve the agreement with Charter uh, for the broadband, along with the um, necessary budget amendments to allocate the ARPA funds up to $1.7 million for the broadband project. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for commissioners? I, I had a, a question and answer at our agenda setting meeting, but it did have something to come to mind about how this compares to our previous attempt. Is this a little cleaner deal or is it a little more, uh, I mean, does it have a better timetable? I mean, what's... Yeah, so I, I think that was very clear from the beginning. I did not want to get into the operational side of broadband or even the partnership. So the previous arrangement contemplated was a $4.5 million county contribution um, towards it with a 20 year, uh, essentially a P3 partnership. This is more of a direct contract payment. Um, essentially, we are a we are a grant award. They are a grantee uh, scenario, and so this is a payment they connected in Oconee County is out of the broadband business, um, and those who know how to run the broadband business will be running the broadband at that point. So that was my next question. Once we make the contractual payment to charter, then our obligation ends. That is correct. But they have to to get that service to that house that is correct yeah, yeah we, we the, the the county will yeah, yeah i mean it is essentially a grant relationship with charter uh where we are going to subsidize a portion of their to the portion of the county that don't make economic sense without some subsidy to to build out and then once that's done then the, the county can step back and the telecoms know how to do this um, part of it now know at our last meeting there was a question i assume this Commissioner Saxon asked about the expense if it goes, I think part of the contract, they'll take it so far down a long driveway, but after that, it becomes an expense of the homeowner? That's correct. So they'll go um, about, they actually said up to 1,300 feet from um, back of curve. If, if you live a mile off the house, you, there's another quarter. 
place to go. But yeah, it's five to six dollars a living foot at that point. But okay. um, a, 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 the typical contract that we've seen is about three hundred from the curb. So to go thirteen hundred is a pretty substantial amount. Um, along that line, since you're talking about the service to the house, do you know if that will be fiber or is that going to be copper? Uh, it's, a, it's a fiber bill. So it'll be fiber all the way to the house. Uh, the other thing is, as far as the route, um, do we have any idea which routes are going to, I know they're, I'm assuming this goes all the way to the county line. And so is that going to go, you know, all the way down to Greene County, down 15 or? It will. It, so the first 90 days, I'll, I'll make a call tonight, uh, assuming it's legal. And uh, so it'll take 90 days and go through everything, make sure that, you know, the address is there that we put forward. But, and the, they indicated they, they're going to start with the Argoff area, which is the southernmost portion uh, within that. But yes, it goes all the way to the county line at Clearfield County. So the, the 15 corridor um, all the major roads down there. Uh, the beauty of this too, this these 2,200 addresses represent the most challenging addresses uh, in the county to get. Um, once complete, we'll have a very, there's a few that there's no mountaintop in Oconee County, but there, there might be some. Um, we have some additional funds. We still have the 4.5 million uh, it's lost 21 coming up, so we, we have to redeploy a little bit more to kind of finish off, add on to this, or even look at a different, we're not bound by this agreement by that point once this is completed also. Any other questions? It's exciting. It's been on our list for quite a long time. It's been a very complicated process, and we've taken, taken a lot of swings at different laws coming across it. Uh, this is a good deal for the county. It's going to be a lot quicker as far as timeline. Uh, and best part is you don't get calls on Friday night that there's somebody's cables out. So. <laughs> exactly. Do we have any public comment on this item? Anyone virtually? Uh, with that, we'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion we approve the, the broadband, potential broadband agreement and with uh, budget amendments as well. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second to approve. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, motion carries. Our next item is ratification of the Oconee County Library Architect Agreement. This is a standard architectural agreement. We did the same thing with Bogart. We try to help the library system out with their construction projects, and this is one thing. Daniel's reviewed. Everything's in order. We just need a permission for me to sign that document so they can get rolling on design of the new Watkinsville branch. Any questions? Any public comment? Anyone virtually? Second. With that, we'll entertain a motion. I make a motion that we approve the ratification of the Oklahoma County library architectural agreement second we have a motion second uh any discussion all in favor aye thank you motion carries does any commissioner wish any item to be removed from consent agenda with that we'll entertain a motion make a motion we approve the consent agenda as submitted second we have a motion and second all in favor aye thank you motion carries we do need an executive session in reference to land acquisition and litigation. Make a motion. <clears throat> we uh, adjourn into the executive session for land acquisition and uh, litigation. litigation. Second. We have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carried.
I make a motion we go back in the regular session. Second. We have a motion second to go back in regular session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Daniel. Make a motion to extend the temporary construction period for a period of 24 months in the matter of condemnation of um, property owned by Dickens Farms, Inc. Uh, consisting of 74,466 square feet of plant utility easement and 73,891 square feet of temporary construction easement and 12,242 square feet of access easement. That's only 12 months, right? Or is that 12 months? So moved. Hold on just a second. Oh, sorry. Mr. Chairman, I need to uh, request to be recused. Very good. All right, we'll entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. Second. We have a motion second to approve the pres as presented. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. With that, Commissioner Saxon. Motion to adjourn. Second. We're we done.